In this video, I will show you how to calibrate and to improve the accuracy of an infrared distance sensor. Everything that will be shown in this video can be generalized to other sensor types, such as, for example, ultrasonic sensors. The main purpose of a distance sensor is to measure the distance from the front of the sensor until the front surface of the object. However, sensors do not directly measure the distance. Instead, they measure the voltage. And the voltage corresponds to certain distance. For this particular sensor, the function relating the distance and the voltage has the following shape. Our main goal would be to experimentally determine this curve such that when the sensor operates and when it gives us voltage value, we can use this curve to find the distance. So the sensor calibration is basically an experimental procedure of determining this curve. So, how can we experimentally determine this curve? Well, we can place an object in front of the sensor and we can measure the voltage. That is, we can obtain one point on a graph. By repeating this procedure several times, we can obtain points relating distance and the voltage. Our ultimate goal would be to fit a line through these measurement points. We will use a very powerful method called a method of least squares to achieve this task. The experimental setup consists of a distance sensor, a low-pass filter, Arduino Mega microcontroller, a laptop computer, and an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is used to get more insights into the nature of the measurement noise. The raw sensor voltage is very noisy. That's why we need to apply a low pass filter in order to attenuate high frequency components. To achieve that, we use a low pass RC circuit. The cutoff frequency of this RC circuit is around 28 Hz. So the output voltage will be filtered. So let us see how the RC low pass filter works in practice. Here you can see the sensor output voltage, the raw sensor output voltage. Obviously this signal is quite noisy. You can observe these high frequency components. And let us see what happens when we apply the low pass filter. Now I have applied the low pass filter. Obviously you can see that the high frequency noise components are attenuated. Let us now repeat the procedure. This is the unfiltered voltage and this is when we apply a low pass filter. In addition to the low pass filter we have also used a 35 microfarads bypass capacitor between the power and the ground of the distance sensor. The main purpose of this bypass capacitor is to stabilize the power voltage, which in turn improves the measurement performance. Here is how we calibrate the sensor. We place an object in front of the sensor at certain distance. 
For this distance, we obtain the voltage value. We repeat this procedure for many distances. The sensor range is from 10 to 80 centimeters, so we have divided a line using 5 centimeter increments. Using this procedure, we obtain a series of points. And the next step is to fit a least squares curve through these points. This is explained in the sequel. Next, we proceed with the explanation of a least squares method we use to calibrate the sensor. So this curve over here uh, shows the relation between the distance and the voltage. Now, this curve is experimentally determined curve on the basis of the sensor we have. And you can see that the shape of this curve is in accordance with the experimental data reported by the, by the manufacturer. So here is the experimental curve reported by the manufacturer and you can see that the peak is somewhere around the 8 centimeter and it's uh, most likely around 3.2 uh, volts and if you compare this with our experimental results we can see a similar voltage value. Now let us analyze this function. So, the first thing that we can notice is that this function is not bijection. That is, it doesn't have an inverse. Consequently, for a measure voltage, we cannot uniquely determine the distance. That's why the manufacturer is saying that the range of uh, distances that can be measured by this uh, sensor is from 10 to 80 centimeters because from 10 to 80 centimeters this function actually this part of the function has a unique inverse now the part of the function from 10 to 80 centimeters can be approximated by an exponential function having the form equal to the form of function in equation 1 now our goal would be to estimate the constants k1 and k2. V is the voltage and d is the distance in this function. Now, this is basically a nonlinear function and uh, if we would straightforwardly follow the procedure for form forming a least squares method, we would end up with a nonlinear least squares method that doesn't have uh, a closed form solution. However, we can do a simple trick in order to transform this function into a form that is much more easier for forming a least squares method. So, we can take uh, a natural logarithm of the left hand side and right hand side and by doing so we obtain the equation 2. Now, the equation 2 can be written in the form 3 where we simply denote ln uh, of, of voltage as y, we uh, denote uh, ln of k1 as c1, uh, k2 becomes c2 and uh, logarithmic of a distance becomes x. Now this is a simple uh, linear function in constant c1 and c2 and by uh, taking all the measurements of the voltages and all the distance measurements and grouping them together we can obtain a matrix form of the equation 3 and our goal would be to solve this uh, system of equation, equations for C1 and C2 and we, f we solve such a system of equations using the least squares method and the least squares method formulation is given by the equation 5. Now the solution is given by the equation 6 and this is a basically a closed form solution and once we determine C from this from equation 6 we can compute the constants K1 and K2 using the equation 7. In our case, uh, the estimates were given by the following values. They kind of uh, correspond to general shape of the function. And once we have these estimates, 
we can determine the distance by just inverting, inverting the function. So, by measuring the voltage and knowing these constants, we can uh, determine the distance and we can simply implement this equation in Arduino. Now, uh, here are the experimental results of, uh, of uh, validating, basically, uh, the estimation performance. So, uh, this curve here uh, shows the basically least squares prediction, which are denoted by red uh, crosses and real data, which is denoted by a solid line. Here we uh, test the performance on a new set of data that we didn't use for estimation. Here is the Python code that we use to estimate uh, the constants and to plot the above graphs. And here we also provide Arduino codes that we use to obtain the measurements and to actually uh, invert the function and obtain real-time uh, distances from voltages. After we have performed the calibration procedure, we want to test the measurement accuracy. Currently, the box is at 10 centimeters from the center and the reading shows the following value. Now let us move a box a little bit more. Let's say a 20 and the reading shows now let us now move the box at 40 centimeters. Here is the reading. Let us move the box to 55. Or actually, yes, 55. And let us move the box to 80. And the reading shows 77. So we can observe that as we move further away from the sensor, the accuracy decreases, but not significantly.